Um, I'm just interested how you as a person um, developed from a role of thinking maybe more like a driver, thinking more of sort of the glamour of the role, to then becoming a manager and, and having to put together a team and what the difficulties you found with, with essentially a very, very weak starting point. We've pit, we've, 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 you've just booted out the, the former management. You're, you're yeah. potentially the guy who could be hated by everybody. You know, how did you develop into that role? What were the crucial difficulties that you encountered in those early years? Well, I think, as I said earlier, it's, it's a very different situation being a driver to being a, a manager. And uh, as a driver, like in any sport, you have to be very selfish. You have to be very self-focused. Um, and that wasn't me. That wasn't you know who, who I was. I was OK. I had a, a reasonable talent, but not an exceptional talent. And I was honest with myself to say, do you know what? You know, there's, a, there's other drivers that are out there that are doing things that I, I can't possibly do. But what I felt was that I had a good skill at working with people, whether that be engineers or, or, or um, mechanics or, or whoever, whoever it was within a team and, and getting the best out of them. And so when I decided to take on uh, a team, it was suddenly you've got a different responsibility because suddenly you're responsible for these people's livelihoods, the mortgages that they pay every month, the responsibilities that they have to their family, which is a, a completely different, different pressure than that as a, as a driver, which is, as I say, a much more selfish existence. And, and my philosophy has always been, I'm, I'm not a specialist in any area. Um, you know, I'm a former driver that's put, turned my hand to, to management. I'm not a designer, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a technician, I don't have a, a degree. Um, but what my philosophy was, was to empower the right people in the right roles, to assemble the right people in those positions and to back them. And a lot of what I do is removing obstacles to make sure that I'm getting the best out of those group of individuals as one collective team and to remove obstacles, whether that be with the rule makers, whether it be with the shareholders, whether it be with other teams. Um, to make sure they are able to function and function in the best way that they know, they know how. So the way I work is all about empowerment and empowering the people you know, to, do, to do their job and their roles. And would you say this team element is the crucial factor that set Team Red Bull aside now from, from those other rivals that you mentioned? I mean, there's something for this, this, this young upstart team that's setting it aside and do you think it's that, it's that ethos that you've got there? That, 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 com that, that team element that you just think you do better than everybody else? Or? I think that the team element is, is, is absolutely critical. And, um, uh, you know, Red Bull, it's a, as a company, you know, it's a cool company. It does some cool activities, whether it's people jumping out of balloons in the stratosphere um, to great parties that they have. But, um, you know, the, the race team is very much a race team. It's very much focused on ongoing racing. And, you know, I often liken it because everybody says, oh, you've got Adrian Newey, you're going to win. Now, that is no guarantee for success. Adrian is a wonderful, wonderful designer and his track record is second to none. But it's like having an orchestra and a conductor. If you've got the best conductor in the world and a shitty orchestra, you're going to play crap music. Um, and you've got to have all the right instruments in the right areas. And, you know, that's very much how, how we operate in that we've got a fantastic conductor, but we've got a great orchestra as well. And therefore then you play, play good music. And I think it is very easy to underestimate, you know, uh, the team element, especially in a team that has 500, 550 people in. Excellent. Um, you've obviously had a lot of success, but what would be your one highlight of like your Formula One career? The one highlight, um, I would say it was winning the Drivers' World Championship for the first time in Abu Dhabi. Um, winning the first race was, was special. Um, it was very special because we're, we're an English-based team, but we're Austrian-owned, and they play the national anthem of, the, of your team owner. And when I went up and got the, the trophy, they played the British national anthem, which I could just feel in Austria the, <laughs> not going down particularly well. Um, but thankfully, we won a few more races and they rectified it after that. Um, but winning that first race, that first championship against all the odds, 
um, in Abu Dhabi because our expectation in that race was really not that we... We consoled ourselves before the race thinking we, we've won the constructors, the constructors where the money is, the drivers is just pomp and glory for the drivers. It's the constructors that means is, is the real one. Um, and we were trying to convince ourselves that we, we, we you know, tidied up the, the, the big championship and the drivers was just, just about the drivers. And, and then Sebastian produced the most phenomenal race. Um, and then suddenly the realization that, wow, he's in a position that he can win this. And then when he crossed the line, that feeling of just elation of, of, of achievement, not for me personally, but f as a team, as a group, uh, it was, was fantastic. Right. Yeah, um, as a previous driver, do you ever get to test or drive around in the new Red Bulls? Uh, no, <laughs> single <laughs> word. Um, to be honest, I mean, those ca the cars are so fast um, that you have to be physically extremely fit, first of all, to drive them. I don't think I could probably manage half a lap um, now. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, my time as a driver, I retired at the age of 24 from active driving. Um, and uh, it, for me, those days are, are long gone. I drive every year at, at the Goodwood Revival. Uh, somebody's mad enough to invite me to drive one of their precious cars and every year I do it I think why on earth did I agree to do this as you've got drivers hurtling around and, and the barriers only ever get closer so uh, um, in some respects you know it was uh, I would enjoy I would enjoy to have the opportunity to drive a Red Bull uh, but in others I'm grateful that uh, th that I don't and um, you know, what I am grateful for is that the driving that I did, the, the, that I managed to drive at a level that gave me an insight. And when you're sitting in the car and you're looking out and you've got everybody looking in, whether it's the mechanics, the engineers, the designers, they're looking for you. They're looking, you know, to feed from you the information that you give. And sometimes, you know, with engineers and designers that haven't experienced driving the car, things can get lost in translation um, that a driver's perhaps trying to get across something to his engineer that he's not picking up on and I think having had that experience and had in a small way some of the emotions that the drivers had to go through in the build-up to the race you know many of them are superstitious it's not superstition it's just purely a process of what they go through I have one superstition left. I used to be very superstitious when I drove and get in for the car from the left and put your gloves on before you get in and this and that. I only have one superstition left, which was I have a lucky toilet um, at each, each race that we go to, which can be quite embarrassing if it's the only toilet in use and all the others are free and you're waiting in there to use the lucky loo. Um, but uh, as I say, the, the drivers and both Sebastian and Mark, they both have these these superstitions that they do run through before they get in the car.